Welcome. Uh, now, Chilla, this is the part where I tell you you were right. <laughs> what was I right about? You were right about fire chat. I, I, I thank you for reminding me that I was so negative about this when it first came out. So explain to everybody what fire chat is again, because you're, you're more in tune with this, so, obviously, since you're the one that's correct. So fire chat, fire chat <laughs> is, is a chat app. Um, and, it, and it's grown. I haven't, I, I haven't kept up with it completely. I jump in there every once in a while, but the original intent was you launch fire chat and everyone gets thrown into a giant chat room where you can interact with everybody that's using fire chat. Right. Now the interesting part about fire chat is obviously if you have an internet connection, you're going to be in this chat room with everyone. If you don't have an internet connection, it'll actually um, hop from device to device. So anyone within a certain amount of distance, whether it be Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever type of connection, it's actually going to almost like telephone game and it's going to broadcast to everyone. So I, my use cases for this when it, when it launched were if you're at a remote location and it's something like a large concert or festival. Where like maybe a Burning Man? Poor, poor internet connectivity. <laughs> you could actually jump in this room and be like, hey, I'm looking for so-and-so, that kind of thing. And I could I could really see this taking off during any kind of natural disaster mm-hmm. where certain services are down. Being able to reach out to others, I mean, I, I don't want to go all. Walking and and dead, this goes but... this. I think this goes along with our conversation a few a uh, few weeks ago when we talked with uh, Josh Lucas down at the hardware store where they're they're with the the mesh net people here right. in Pittsburgh. You know that idea of the shared uh, internet, shared Wi Fi uh, in case something goes down. Um, now, now the thing that, that popped up over the last week, of course, um, I know I, I've noticed, uh, on the news quote news programs, my John Oliver's and, and, and John Stewart's, um, about the, uh, protests in Hong Kong that are going on right now, which are by the way, the most peaceful protest you're ever going to see pretty fantastic. Um, but there's a great article over on the verge about why a messaging app meant for festivals became massively popular during the Hong Kong protests. So, of course, you know, uh, the Internet's not great, especially with that that large of people. Hell, uh, Internet's not very good if you're in console arena for WWE Raw here in Pittsburgh, right? There's just like, you know, what, 15,000 people in one place all trying to use their phone. All the towers are jammed, right? And, and Verizon tries extremely, so Verizon has a lot to do with that service and console. Ooh. They try extremely hard to keep that up and running. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so they, they actually, they're, they're, they're talking with some people there about why they're using fire chat. And by the way, I want to, uh, you know, this is a presumably a small Asian woman with a giant, giant freaking phone, um, which I, I think is pretty popular. I think they, they generally get giant phones if, if, if they're into smartphones. Um, but, Again, you know, they're protesting. They, they, you know, the internet's not great with that many people in one place. So they're using this. It, it's handing off with Bluetooth, with Wi-Fi, and they can all connect. Now, it does question, you know, is this, you know, is this secure? You know, yes, the government can uh, tap into it too. Uh, but still, it's it's kind of a first step. It's kind of like a, a last resort um, to to organize in a situation like this. Um, so again, not an intended use of this. It was actually, you know, I think the founders are saying in here that it was made for festivals. It was made for burning mans and everything like that. Um, it doesn't require the internet, like, like, uh, WhatsApp, which is, you know, pretty popular in some of these other countries. Um, so a pretty cool actual use of, of that kind of, uh, I guess, peer to peer, right? And one of the nice things, so, uh, and it's not one of these things where they just created this app and kind of forgot about it. Mm-hmm. I, I've gotten multiple app updates as well as they continue to kind of update the back end. Yeah. So, so one of the things I've seen over time is, um, and I, like I said, I, I don't go in there every day or even every week, but recently you, you can now create kind of chat rooms and you can, I think you have the ability to maybe private message, um, but it's also very anonymous. You kind of create your own handle and username, and that's it, mm-hmm. which is funny because a lot of people in, in, the, in the beginning, 
were, were logging in and calling themselves fire chat admin and um, Twitter admin. Like they, they, everyone had these crazy handles because it, it, that's the other thing to keep in mind. It's not really regulated or it doesn't seem monitored in any way, shape or form. But, it, it 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 works in certain situations. It, it sounds like in, in in a situation where you're at a Burning Man or something like, there's nobody really to, there's no connection for somebody to really be messing with you. Anyways, it's just going to be the people there, right? Right. So saying you're a fire chat admin really doesn't help anybody when you're like, but I'm not on the internet. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.